God, the most beneficent, the most merciful, praise be to Him, our Creator, our Sustainer. I begin in His name and I send my peace and my blessings upon Muhammad and his holy progeny. And I send my condolences to the Imam of my time, Imam al Mahdi al Muntadar. May Allah hasten his reappearance on the martyrdom of his mother, my lady Fatima al Zahra al Muhaddith al Tahir al Zakiya. Peace be upon her. We narrated to you some manaqib, some merits. We showed you the status of our Fatima, peace be upon her. Tonight, in this episode, we will show you the instructions and the commands left forth and left to us by Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his holy family, concerning taking care of his Ahlul Bayt, of his progeny. You see, the Mukhalifin, the Ammah of the Muslims today, they took the commands and the will and the instruction of Rasulullah in protecting and taking care of Ahlul Dhimma. Ahlul Dhimma are the Christians and the Jews and the polytheists and etc. in this category. They took and held very strongly in taking care of Ahlul Dhimma, yet they rejected, they threw the will and the command and the instruction of Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his holy family, concerning the holy household. What did they do to the holy household? They killed them, oppressed them, terrorized them were unjust towards them. My job today is to narrate to you so the entire world knows the commands of Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his holy family, concerning his holy household. Did the Ummah of Rasulullah, did the Ummah of the Apostle of Allah, did the Ummah of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him and his holy family, did this Ummah take care of the Ahlul Bayt? Of course they did not. But it is wajib upon me to narrate to you these Ahadith. The first Hadith. Remember these Ahadith can be found amongst all the schools of Islam. Not Shi'i, not Ammi, Khasa and Amma. The Mukhalif and the Mu'alif will both have this Hadith. The first hadith found in Sunan al dayrami Volume 2, page 432. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, By Allah, I stand here and I remind you to take care of my household. I remind you of my Ahlul Bayt. Every single time Rasulullah spoke, he reminded the Ummah of the Ahlul Bayt. Second report. O oh people, do not come to me tomorrow in a state wherein you have furnished your worldly desires and pleasures in the best of ceremonies, while my household will come forth disheveled in a tragic state, covered in dust, oppressed and covered in their own blood. What, what do you see? You see number two. We see the second part of the hadith. We don't see the first part. The first part is today. The ummah furnished and decorative. They have attached themselves to the worldly desires. And what happened? They killed Ali ibn Abi Talib. They killed Al Hassan. They killed Al Hussein. They killed the entire holy Durri of Rasulullah. They killed the companions. They killed the Shia until today. 
He says, O oh people, by Allah, by Allah, I remind you of my household. Third report by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> he says, I instruct you to take care of my household for in this command is blessings and in this command is goodness. A time will come. A time will come which is that day, the day of judgment where I will dispute with you concerning this command. Furthermore, the one whom I dispute with, I will take action with and make him enter the fires of hell. You see how important it is to take care of the Ahlul Bayt? Rasulullah will be the one, the Hakim, the judge between them on the Day of Judgment. How did they treat Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her? I am reporting to you these ahadith so you can go research. Did they follow this command and this instruction of Rasulullah? The next hadith. Remember me by safeguarding my progeny. My household, he who follows this command and safeguards my progeny, Allah will protect him. Allah will protect him. He who hurts them receives the damnations, the curses, the la'na of Allah. He repeated this statement three times, Rasulullah. He who hurts the Ahlul Bayt hurts me, hurting me hurts Allah. A beautiful equation. Fatima is a part of me. Whoever hurts her hurts me, and whoever hurts me hurts Allah, and Allah curses them. And the Prophet repeated the statement three times. This is the first group of the hadith. Let us look at the complaints of Rasulullah. Rasulullah has complained about this ummah. He said, foreshadowing and prophesizing the pain that his Ahlul Bayt will, will, will receive after his martyrdom. He said, narrated in Al Manaqib of Al Maghazili, after my passing, my household will face expulsion and displacement. They will be living in solitude. The Medina of Rasulullah becomes not their Medina, becomes the Medina that they are pushed away from and expelled from to live in solitude. Imam Ali السلام, is buried far away from Medina in Najaf. Imam Al Jawad, Imam Al Kadhim are buried in Kadhmiya. Imam al Rida, Gharib al Ghuraba, all the way. Where? In Iran, in Mashhad, in Tus. Sayyida Zainab, Gharibah, all the way in Damascus, in Sham. The Ahlul Bayt dispersed entire, around the entire globe. Where is the Ummah? If the Ummah took the command of Rasulullah, we would have the graves of Ahlul Bayt shining where? Shining in Medina, beautiful golden domes. But no, they did not take care of the Ahlul Bayt. What is the result now of those who hurt the holy household? The following hadith can be found as well in the Manaqib of Al Maghazili. And my mistake, the hadith I narrated before is found in Al Mustadrak of Al Hakim, Al Mustadrak Al Sahihain. Let me narrate to you this footnote. In the footnote of the book titled Al Hajum Ala Bayti Fatima, on page 22 in the footnote, it says, Concerning the reports of the result who hurt the household, I say, Al Samhudi, who died 19, 19, 911 after Hijrah, has compiled in his book Jawahar al Aqdain 
341 sections that warn the individual on the outcome of those who hurt the holy household and carry enmity, anger towards them. The results conclude that those who oppress them are cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 341 sections about the result of those who hurt Ahlul Bayt and the conclusion we get out of it that those who hurt Ahlul Bayt are cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith by Rasulullah narrated narrated in the Manaqib of Al-Maghazili says what destruction and affliction awaits those who oppress my household their punishment is amongst the hypocrites in the deepest place in the fires of hell do you see what kind of adab those who hurt Fatima peace be upon her receive their place in hell is the lowest depths of hell. Who narrates this hadith? Not a Shia scholar, a Mukhalif scholar, a Ammi scholar. The next hadith. <coughs> Found in a well-known book, Kenzul Ummal of al muttaqil Hindi. A Ammi scholar. He narrates from Rasulullah a couple of hadith that have the same context. He says, Allah's anger intensifies on the one who hurts me by hurting my progeny. In a different hadith, in the same book, he says, the one who hurts me by hurting my progeny has hurt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Ahzab, verse number 57, وَالَّذِينَ يَأْذُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولُهُ لَعَنَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Those who, those who hurt Allah and His Messenger, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has damned them and cursed them in this world and the hereafter and has prepared for them a severe punishment. The Qur'an speaks and the Ahadith speak. Now, we will analyze the reports in which Rasulullah, peace be upon him, prophesied the malice and the hatred the Ummah carried towards Ahlul Bayt and specifically towards my master Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him. This report, this report is very powerful. From Yunus ibn Habbab from Anas ibn Malik, one of the muhaddithin and the traditionists of Ahlul Khilaf. He says, we were, with, we were with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, was with us. We were walking and we were walking and we passed by a garden. We passed by a garden and Ali ibn Abi Talib said, Ya Rasulullah, ma ahla? He said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, what beauty does this garden have? Rasulullah, peace be upon him and his holy family, tells Ali ibn Abi Talib, O oh, Ali, in paradise you have one even more beautiful and one even more better than this garden. Anas says, we passed by seven gardens and Ali ibn Abi Talib Ruhi Lahul Fida would say the exact same statement and Rasulullah peace be upon him and his family would respond in the exact same answer. Anas says suddenly the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam stopped do you know when you have a friend that's very close to you, a brother that's very close to you, you put your hand behind his back, you put your forehead to his forehead, and you begin to complain to him, you begin to cry, you begin to tell him of the misery you face, of the news that you have. What happened? 
رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم روحي له الفداء took a long deep breath he went close to Amir al-Mu'mineen and he put his forehead to Amir al-Mu'mineen peace be upon him and he began to weep he began to weep he began to weep and Ali ibn Abi Talib told him Ruhi lak al ya Rasulullah why is it that you are crying? Why is Rasulullah crying? Rasulullah is crying because Jibra'il has informed him. The Archangel Gabriel, peace be upon him, has informed him of what malice the enemy has. Rasulullah says, A group of people from my ummah, from my nation, carry malice and enmity in their hearts towards you. They carry envy and hasad towards you. They carry anger towards you. They will not unveil these feelings until my passing away. They will not unveil these feelings. They will not begin to express their feelings until I pass away. This report is narrated Sharh al-Nahj of Ibn Abi al-Hadid Volume 4, page 107 Al-Khawarizmi in his Manaqib, page 65 Mujma' al-Zawaid, Volume 9, page 118 and Kenzu al-Ummal, Volume 13, page 176 and others This hadith has an ending this ending can be found in the foot in the book of Sulaim ibn Qais al Hilali Radwan Allah Ta'ala Alayh. The ending is the following. The beginning is the same, the ending is the following. The addition in Kitab Sulaim is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam continued. He said, The hatred of Badr and the red mitts of Uhud. You are like me. Like Haron was to Musa, was to Moses, alayhi salam. They will revolt against you and you will be like Haron and those who followed him and they will be like those who followed the calf, those who followed the Samari. For Moses had commanded Haron when he left, he told him, if you find people to aid you, then revolt. If you do not find people to aid you, then put down your weapon. Do not spill any blood and do not cause disunity amongst the nation. This is the words of Rasulullah to Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him. The hatred is in the hearts. The hatred lies in their hearts and they took it out on my mast, on my lady Fatima to Zahra, peace be upon her. There's more to tell you, but our time is finished. We will continue insha'Allah and we will speak about the other ahadith in which Rasulullah prophesied the anger and malice that the Ummah carries towards Ahl al-Bayt. Assalamu alayki. Peace be upon you, my lady Fatima. And may Allah hasten the reappearance of your son, the awaited savior, Imam al-Mahdi al-Muntadar, Ajal Allah ta'ala, Farajuhu al-Sharif. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm.